Hi, my name is Wes Warner. I'm a Lieutenant RN and Field Training Officer with Advantage Ambulance. We're going to be talking about the LTV 1200 ventilator. We're going to go through the operations and functions and setup of a circuit. So, this is our LTV 1200. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's actually an easy ventilator to work with. Uh, first and foremost, we got the battery pack right here, um, the charger. You just need to make sure that you press down real hard here and you release. If you don't, you can break this little tab here and they're not cheap. Uh, so I'm gonna move this out of the way. Uh, you have a six hour battery pack here and a one hour internal. Don't disconnect them. If you disconnect them right here, then uh, uh, it won't charge thoroughly. So you should charge it from this port and it'll cycle through both battery packs. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. All right, uh, this green hose here is your high pressure hose. We use this uh, with all patients except for CPAP or BiPAP patients. Um, when you open up a circuit, you can see the circuits are up here. Uh, when you open up a circuit, I'll show you what you get inside. So you'll get length of tubing like this, uh, extra piece that you don't need, so you can get rid of that. They use that for humidified uh, air. And this is a second circuit, this is a pediatric circuit. So you notice the difference in diameter. This one uh, limits you, uh, limits the dead space with a tidal volume of 500. Inside your pack, you're gonna also find a little uh, connector. You're gonna wanna make sure you have that. And some of them have flexible pieces on the end that you can use that make it a little bit more comfortable for the, uh, like a trach patient or the uh, ET tube. And uh, that way it's not pulling hard when you set this up and have the circuit running off to the side. So Now when you set up your circuit, you're gonna have uh, two filters. Uh, you'll notice one of them has a, a blue line on it. It says humid on it. This is a, the humidi humidified air filter. This one's a bacterial and particulate filter. This goes directly on your vent and you're gonna use this, hooks up right into here like that. So what I would recommend is to wedge these together first, then to put on this one. Get these all nice and snug. That way you can use it as a handle to pop it off. They're uh, only used uh, per patient, so you, you dispose them. I'm gonna go ahead and take that one off since there's, since there's already one wedged in here, and uh, you just go right onto that. On the side here, I'm gonna show you how to hook these little tubes up. So if you look over here, they're color-coded, and two of them twist and one pop pops on. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take one of them, you're going to counter turn it, and that way it wants to thread on to the right. So put it in here, the counter turned, and now I made that nice and snug. Counter turned back, put it on, nice and snug. I'm gonna take this one, I'm gonna push it right on. Get it in there, because if you don't get it on tight enough, it'll pop off. If you end up getting an alarm that says disconnect sense or DISC sense, uh, that most likely is that one of these are cross-threaded. Uh, so you wanna pay attention to uh, it, that it's going on uh, straight and flush. Uh, if you get that disconnect sense, first check your circuit. Make sure your patient has chest rise and fall. Make sure that uh, the circuit itself is fine. This would come after. Uh, so if you, you see that you're ventilating your patient, no problems, uh, and uh, SATs are good, everything looks fine, uh, then go over here and just pop these back off and put them back on. And uh, usually that's the, the main issue with these circuits. Uh, so now that that's all hooked up, your high pressure hose can either go onto the back, your D tank right here on your gurney tank, or you can go into the wall uh, on your main tank here. And there's a couple little divots here uh, or little prongs. They go right in, just push it straight in. And when you take it out, you just pull it out, but you gotta twist that to pull it out. Uh, if you don't twist it, it's not coming out. You don't need to twist it to push it in. You just push it straight in. There's a couple of filters here uh, for airflow. Uh, just don't block them. Make sure that they're open uh, and you don't have anything occluding them. Uh, and then also you have these hooks. Most of our cases have these hooks set up. Um, sometimes they pop off, just go ahead and them back on. 
all right? And you can hang your ventilator from the, uh, the side rail here, and, uh, or you can put it on the back of the gurney, whichever you like. Uh, a lot of times I'll just put it on the back. Um, all right, so going through it. This thing's gonna alarm a lot at us uh, because we're not connected to the patient and they don't have oxygen turned on. So first we're gonna turn on the ventilator. You're gonna hear a lot of beeping, a lot of alarms going off. And it says same patient. Uh, you can use same patient if you put in all the uh, information that you want, all your settings, and then put it on standby and come back to it later, you can use same patient. But for the most part, you're gonna use new patient, select, pick infant, pediatric, or adult. I'm gonna do adult. It says disconnect, sense. It's because it knows that there's not a circuit attached to it, and you don't have the little tubes attached as well. So we're just gonna press silent quite a bit. Uh, so you can just press, go to your dial, change whatever it is that you want, it, whatever setting you want to change, press it again, and it'll stay. Your tidal volume, uh, inspiratory time, uh, your sensitivity. These two are pretty straightforward. You can just match it up to whatever the ventilator is that they're currently on, and uh, you can ask the respiratory therapist, and they'll let you know what these values are if you don't see them immediately. Um, you have your uh, FiO2 here, just dial it to whatever your FiO2 is uh, ordered. Um, these are all your alarm settings. You can go ahead and change through these and set them uh, as your patient dictates and what you want to be alarmed for. Uh, coming over here, you can hit assist control is green already. That's how it starts off. Press it again and again. Now your CPAP SIMV. And let's go back. Okay, so assist control right here. Then you can choose volume or pressure uh, for your assist control. Uh, so right now you notice it's highlighted here uh, with the volume. If I switch it over to pressure, it now dims and your, uh, so your tidal volume is dim because you're not gonna be using that. Uh, it goes off of pressure control and sets it at 15 and you can adjust that as appropriate. Uh, switch on back if you need to go back to just your typical uh, assist control patient with the tidal volume uh, setting. You don't need to use the inspiratory hold or the manual breath. Uh, that's for home ventilation or if the hospital is going to use it as a transport vent or a temporary vent. Uh, you can lock all your controls if you'd like. Here was the low pressure O2 source I was talking about. You could press and hold that. And then it uh, lights up and takes away your FiO2. So now you're set up to be able to use it for uh, CPAP or BiPAP if you remove the hose. If you remove the hose and uh, hook up the Christmas tree and use the extension tubing. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. All right. And now you're back with your FiO2 and you can go ahead and adjust that. Uh, and when you have a, an alarm that goes off, and is flashing at you, you'd have to double click it and it'll go away. It just wants you to acknowledge it. But because this is a continuous issue and, and problem, it's not gonna go away and you're just gonna keep alarming at you. Uh, but had you corrected that, uh, just double press your silence button and uh, it will remove that, um, that alarm. All right, so when you uh, set up for BiPAP or CPAP, we're gonna switch over to the low pressure O2 source. How we're going to do that is you are going to get your CPAP bag. Uh, it's a black bag. You'll find it in your equipment checkout. I have it back here. This is what it looks like. It has a bunch of masks, all kinds of stuff in it. I'm going to pull out the stuff that you're going to use. You have this low pressure hose. It's basically just O2 connecting hose. Uh, you're going to find a metal and you can use the plastic one if you want. It works fine. Uh, but we have these metal Christmas trees and uh, you can take out your mask and you're gonna have your wrench. So, I'm just gonna simulate this for you. You would just go ahead and put your wrench on here, go easily, take off this hose. You're gonna connect your Christmas tree to it. This also pivots if you need it to move in a different direction. You're gonna put this on, then you're gonna go ahead and connect your uh, O2 extension hose. So that'll go onto your uh, Christmas tree this one will go over to your regulator on either your D tank or your main tank over on the wall, and you're going to use it just like you would in the hospital. So, 
Um, we have a graph that can give you specifics on uh, how to obtain a certain FiO2 um, with uh, using liters per minute. Uh, and I will give you a copy of that graph. If you want, you can go, I usually start out six to eight liters. Uh, it gives them a, a little boost to O2 right as you're moving them over. And then I start dialing it down and I titrate it down and most of the time one to two liters per minute. And you'll be able to maintain your uh, patient right where you want their sats to be. Check them for comfort, make sure that they have no uh, problems or additional uh, respiratory distress or anything. Uh, and you're pretty much ready to, to get going. Uh, I give it a few minutes. I'll usually sit for anywhere from a minute to five minutes and just really making sure that, that my patients are comfortable. Um, all right, so you'll be on the BiPAP setting. You have all your settings here. You're hooked up here. You're making sure that you have uh, O2 flow. Uh, one main thing that gets missed is that this low pressure O2 source button a lot of times gets forgotten to be pressed. You have to press and hold it for uh, a pretty decent amount of time. So once it stops flashing and fully lights up and stays lit, then you're good to go there. If you don't do this, you'll notice that all of a sudden you're gonna blow the, uh, the tubing off of the regulator. It just pops off because there's so much pressure there. Uh, so you're gonna wanna make sure that you uh, hit that button. When you do, it's gonna take away this O2, your, basically your FiO2. It's gonna take that away and it's just gonna have some dashes there. Uh, I've had nurses in the past have this vent and when they get it the person before them didn't take it off that setting and they saw the dashes couldn't uh, change the FiO2 on it just remember if that button's hit you're not going to be able to adjust that so you just press and hold it again until it goes away and then you have normal function of FiO2 uh, so um, that's pretty much it for the uh, LTV 1200 it's pretty straightforward it's very user friendly it does uh, tend to be a little sensitive with the alarms, um, but the main one is the disc, uh, disconnect sense. Uh, sometimes you'll have a low peep. Um, you just want to check your cuff pressures on your uh, ET tubes or your trachs. Make sure you have a good seal there. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, just let one of the field training officers know, and uh, we're always here for you. Thank you.